Good morning. How's everybody doing this morning? We're so glad you're here. If you join online, welcome to Tree of Life in Pflugerville, Texas. presence this morning. Come on, tell him how much you love him. Open up your gates. Release your own sound, your words, your song, your tune. Tell him how thankful you are to have life, to have breath. just give you all the praise this morning. We bless your name. You alone are worthy to be praised. We're going to make a few declarations in the song this morning.
Yes, 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 yes to every promise, to every blessing, to every covenant. I say yes, but now you must take it by force and you must do your part. I have given you the beachhead. I have equipped you. I have given you the artillery. I have given you the strength and I have given you the position. So now take aim and fight and do your battle and wipe the enemy off of his platforms and take him out of his entrenched places and remove him so that you can move forward and step into the promises that I have given you.
He knows my He knows my name and know how he walks with me and know how he talks with me and know how he tells me that I am his own.
Father, we thank you that you are our victory. Thank you, Father, that you are the one that is victorious in our lives and in our hearts. Father, that you are our defender, Lord, that you do, you do go before us, Father, and you do go behind us. And that, Father, we can trust in you. Lord, we love you today and we honor you and we bless you. For, Lord, you are the King of kings and you are the Lord of lords and you are the great I am. And we honor you for that today. Father, we thank you that you are faithful towards your people. That, Father, what you have begun in us, Father, you will complete. Father, that the things that you have planted in us, Father, will come to pass. Father, those words that have been prophesied and spoken over us, Father, that you hold them in your palm of your hands and in your heart. And Father, that they, we can walk, even though they may be tried and true, Lord, we know that you will do what you have said you will do. And we thank you for that. We thank you for that today, Father. We thank you that we have a good future, a good hope, and that you are faithful towards your people. Father, we bring Martha before you today, Father, who's in the hospital, Father, dealing with uh, health issues, Father. We pray, Lord, that you would touch her exactly where she's at. Lord, that you would minister to every, uh, every organ of her body, that it would function right and accordingly, Father, to the Creator. And Lord, we thank you that they have wisdom as they, they, they uh, do medications and that they, they treat her. But Father, above all, we are standing in healing, Father. We stand for healing in Martha's life today, Father. And we thank you that you are the great I am, that she will be able to stand up and say, look what the Lord has done. And we thank you for that. We thank you for healing our bodies. Father, the, those people in this place today that need healing, Lord, we come to you once again and we call upon the healer. And we pray that you would touch us. Things that are longstanding, things that are new, Father, the, the, what the enemy has come and thrown at us, Father, we stand and we rebuke and we renounce sickness and disease in our bodies. And Father, I stand with those in this place believing for that today. And we thank you, Father, that you have your shown yourself faithful and true time and time again. Because, Lord, guess, great is your faithfulness. We thank you that you are faithful to your people. 
And we honor you today, Father. We pray you'd be with the children and the youth and all those that are gathering today in this place, this service. Lord, have your way. Holy Spirit, speak to us, show us, guide us, and lead us. I pray that every person that has stepped in this place today, one way they will leave another, that you would intervene and yet you work and on our behalf, Father, and we thank you for that. We bless you and we honor you. We honor you today, Father, and we thank you. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. God's good, isn't he? He's good. You're very quiet out there. I tell you what, if I was standing here believing God for a healing in my life, I would be praying. Amen. And I would believe God that he is faithful to intervene on our behalf. We've seen him do it time and time again. Amen. Martha is in the hospital. We need to keep praying for her, that she needs healing. Amen. She needs a healing. And we need to just believe God's going to do miraculous works in her kidneys in Jesus' name. Amen. Her kidneys are made whole in the name of Jesus. You know, um, when my daughter was in the hospital and all her um, organs were failing and they told us she would not live, her kidneys were one of the things that totally, totally stopped working. And they told me that she would be on dialysis for the rest of her life, three days a week. And I said, no, no, God, we can't have this. And you know what? Today she walks with 100% of kidney function in Jesus. Amen. Amen. God touched her, and he can heal. He can heal, and he will heal, and he desires to see us walking in his healing and his faithfulness. Amen? In Psalm 191 this morning, um, it says, you all know this very well, but I want to remind you that he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High. So guess what? He. Who's he? Me. You. All right? He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. All right, we've been walking through this heat. It's been a little warm, hasn't it? And um, I, was, we, I was walking my grandkids on Saturday. We went for a walk around our neighborhood, and um, it was really hot, even in the morning. I mean, it was probably 9, 9.30 that we went, and boy, we could not wait to get to the next shade. You know, it was like, okay, let's go, let's go. Here comes the shade so that we could be in the shade. And you know what? That's what it's like being under the shadow of the Almighty. We need to keep running to be under the shadow of the Almighty where there's there's relief, there is comfort, there there is wholeness, amen? And so we were glad for all those trees, and we kept going from shade spot to shade spot. And then it says, I will say of the Lord, he's my refuge and fortress, my God in him I will trust. And when I read that, I was thinking about it, and no matter, um, my daughter and son-in-law have gone out of town for five days, and I've been staying at their house taking three care of these three little ones. They're all under four. Okay, Jesus help me. Now we know why we don't have children at this age. But um, it's, been, it's been amazing, actually. And God just restores you and helps you through everything. I had to learn a lot on the first day because I forgot everything. Um, but anyhow, um, my, my point of this is that I was crying out to God for things that I haven't cried out to for years. <laughs> you know, and I was thinking how in every season of our life, every season, every Not only seasons, because that season for me of having little ones in my house is over. But yet when I step into that place, God meets me at that place. And I can recall him on things that I used to call for my children. Like somebody asked me, how's it going? I said, well, my main goal is to keep them alive, okay? My second goal is to love on them a lot. And my third goal is to feed them. They need to eat, I have a thing about kids not eating. So for me, I need them to eat. And um, they said, well, what about rest? I said, well, that'll come Tuesday, you know. It's fine because it's 24-7. But the thing is, I can pray and call upon the Lord. Lord, help me keep them protected. Give me wisdom on what we do, that I don't do something stupid and they get hurt. You know, uh, watch over us. When I drive, coming to church this morning, I said, okay, girls, let's pray. We're on our way to church. And I'm praying and I'm saying, we pray for protection, Lord. Watch over us. Let's have a good day today. You know, and that's what I want to encourage you in. No matter where you are in what situation you in, you can call upon the name of the Lord and be saved. Amen. His word doesn't change because you're in a different place or a different season 
or you're doing them something different. Even if you're taken out of your comfort zone. Who likes being in comfort zones? No, no one? Me. I do. I like being in a comfort zone. And when you're taken out of that, uh, you know, you have to just trust that God is faithful no matter where you are. Amen? And, and he, he will meet you where you're at. And he will deliver us wherever we're at. So we can rely on him and trust him that no matter what season we're in, and I'm not in the season of raising co- children, or what circumstances we're in. So what does that mean for you? We always have help, no matter where we're at. In our job place, you know, our jobs can change. But guess what? God never changes. In our homes, people come and go in our homes. They get older and they leave the house and then the grandkids come or whatever. We, he can be there too. So it's, I want to encourage you today, and that was, was, was strong in me, that he is our deliverer and our refuge and our fortress, no matter what circumstance, no matter what time or place. Amen? And I tell you what, this, this few days has really encouraged me to pray for people who are in seasons in their lives that is maybe tiring or maybe different, and that, that not everybody lives like you do, Right? And they're all in different places. So it's a good reminder to pray for those too, that they remember that God is their, they can rely on him and he's their deliverer, their refuge, and their fortress. Amen. So I just want to encourage you with that today and, and uh, pray for me. <laughs> I'm still there. I'm still making it. And um, pastor's been gracious and come and spent a night with us. Um, but he, you know, has to prepare for today. He went home. He stayed home last night. And he'll probably do that again tonight. But um, it's, it's good to see the hand of God on, on our lives in every way we are, no matter what circumstance or what place. Amen. And he is faithful to us. Well, it's good to see you here today. I know a lot of people are traveling this week. week. It's summertime and lots of stuff is happening. But it's good to have you and we welcome you and all those that are online. If you're a first time guest, we're really excited to have you today. And we would love for you to fill this paper out. We just We want to send you a letter and thank you for being with us. If you have a prayer request, put that on there. We will make sure we pray for you. And if you are a first-time guest here at Tree of Life, we have a gift for you. And um, Miss Audra will have that wave at us right there. She would love to see you after service and share that gift with you here. And if you're online as a first-time guest, you can get connected by going to our webpage and clicking get connected, and we will get in touch with you, all right? All right, this morning I have some good announcements. We are starting um, summer at the movies this Wednesday night. Who wants to go to a good movie this Wednesday night? Okay, well, we're actually starting The Chosen, (laughs) all right? I don't know if you might have seen some of them or not, but they just released it, and we're able to to show it here Wednesday night. So please come and join us. It's fantastic. I actually went to the theaters and saw the first two. They are excellent. Come and come and join us at 6:45. We're going to have pizza and some snacks. So we will be here at 6:45, and then at seven we will start. Okay, so be here on time. And come and join us, all right? There will be child care provided for five years and younger. Also, Shepherd Heart Ministry is meeting Saturday, June the 15th. So this this Saturday coming up. Put that on your calendars. It's a great outreach. Everybody will meet here, I believe. Oh, no, sorry. They're not meeting here. Wrong ministry. Shepherd Heart is out in Taylor, and they meet out in Taylor at 8 o'clock. I just want to push this ministry a little bit. This is an amazing ministry and outreach. Who's been part of that in here? Yes, a lot of you. I want to encourage you, if you've never been to this outreach, it's a great place to meet out there at 8 o'clock, and they pray for people who are in need of food, and they hand out food, and it is awesome. So do that if you can. Also, Father's Day is coming up next Sunday, June the 16th, all right? Get ready to bless our fathers. We're going to be honoring him, them here at the church. And then our school supplies outreach. We do an outreach every year for backpacks, and um, we are starting that actually today. Ms. Kristen sent out info, and I think some of you knew about it. So, But bring in supplies. There's boxes, any school supplies that you find, and it is actually going to be 
um, concluded August the 3rd. So we've got some time, but bring it out, bring it in if you can. I think there's probably a list on what you can bring, but basic school supplies. And if you go online and want to just donate some money to that, and we will buy them, it says school outreach on the offering. If it's not there today, it'll be there Tuesday, because I'll be home and make sure it is, okay? All right, then um, this announcement on the right-hand side, it's about a children's ministry. It's a splash, a free splash pad event, and it actually says Wednesday night. That is incorrect, okay? It is actually Thursday, June the 20th, and they're going to be going to the quarry splash pad at 10 a.m. It's free. Miss Kristen will bring snacks and water. If you're interested in doing that, please join her there, and it's at 10 o'clock in the morning. We, we're doing some summer activities, so this is one of them, and they, she would love to have you. Well, breakfast is meeting June 22nd. It's still out a little bit, but we always meet for breakfast at 8.30, Corner Bakery. And then June 22nd is Cereal Sunday for the kids. So just keep up with that in your, in your uh, calendar and your bulletin. And then we're going to be having another worship karaoke night. All right? Let me hear. Are you excited? Everybody that went loved it. So we're having another one. It's going to be um, at the Sinclair's home, who are hosting it at their home, and we really appreciate that. At 6 to 8.30, the details are in the bulletin. It's going to be June 28th, so you may want to look at that. And you don't have to sing, right? Okay, good. Because then nobody, nobody would come back if I did that. No. But anyhow, all right. So it's good, uh, it's good to see everyone. You want to hand out offering envelopes? That would be great. The youth can be dismissed to go on upstairs. Guess what? Praise the Lord. The air got fixed. Hey, Amen. The air conditioner quit working last week, and so we were able to fix that. And so it is uh, all set up there. If you are watching online today and you would like to give online, it's very easy. You just go to our webpage um, and hit giving, and you can give online. You can text giving. You can uh, send it in online and do an account. And we really appreciate your faithfulness in giving and um, all that you guys do. Um, have done to bless Tree of Life Church. All right, we're going to let Pastor come up and uh, share with you now this morning. Let me move the mic over there. <coughs> Give me one second, do some housekeeping here. Had a messy person before me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I hope you all aren't here for the first time because I'm nicer to my wife normally, and I hope your week's been going good, you've been staying cool, and God's been doing good things in your family and your life as well. Um, before we go any further here, I want to also say, reiterate that I probably will spend the night with the family tonight with those kids. I, I love to be able to do, do night-night time with the little girls. <laughs> I can kind of go back when I had the little girls and Daniel and myself there. Um, two, two nights ago, I was there. I got to tell Ruth Ann the story about the shooting the bullfrogs in the farm pond in Missouri. <laughs> And uh, we had frog legs to eat there in Missouri. How many folks here have ever eaten frog legs? Tastes like chicken, amen? And uh, they're full of protein. And uh, I haven't had that for quite a while, but that's something that farmers do. All right, well, so as far as birthdays go today, uh, it's Edward Garza's birthday, I think, two days. Edward here in the house? Is he here? They're up there back there. Let's give him a hand. He's back around the back, by the back wall there. He's kind of newer to us. A lot of folks don't know him yet. As I was praying about you last night, I received 1 John chapter 2, verse 10. It says, The one who loves and unselfishly seeks the best for his brothers lives in the light. And in him there is uh, no occasion for stumbling or offense. He does not uh, hurt the cause of Christ. And so God is just going to give you the ability here to know that uh, there's people in the light that God's going to put around you this coming year. But also there's going to be um, no more stumbling. God's going to put you, put you in a place here of not stumbling and finding some things that might have caused offense in the past to not be a part of what your life is like for today and for the future. Amen. So just take and read that word, read that verse yourself. I think God will shed even more light on that. That's what I received to you. So happy birthday to Edward. And also we have uh, Michael Pastrano. Is Pastrano's uh, family here today at all? Those guys are all out there watching online. So for Michael, I've got Luke chapter 9, verse 43. They were all amazed at the greatness of God and His majesty and His wondrous works. And you're going to start, I believe, Michael starts seeing more and more of God's greatness, of how big and good God really is, even more so in the year ahead. So just keep on pressing into Him. 
Um, also, we have some uh, anniversaries happening this week. Did I miss any birthday folks? Just raise your hand if I missed a birthday person. Did you get your hand up? We're just kind of okay, you're scratching back there. All right. So as far as anniversaries go, this is the anniversary week for our own daughter and son-in-law named Jeremy and Kristen. She's upstairs in the children's church room. This is what number now for those guys, as far as you know. What year are they getting married? And we, think, we think it's 14 years uh, of marriage because I know the oldest child is 13. No, they, no, 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 no. Yeah, 14 years of marriage. And uh, yeah. And so they're a, a, ble a blessed couple. We appreciate Kristen so much. You don't see her a lot in these Sunday morning services here, but she's probably about the hardest working person we know of in the church here. And she just is a, a, a Kristen of all trades. And just does so many things here to just uh, lift up our arms and arms of others. We appreciate her and Jeremy both. And also we have uh, Hans and Sharon Falk. Are those guys out today as well? We saw them last week here. And uh, they're a precious couple. I'm not sure how many years it is for those guys also. We'll ask them next week about that perhaps. And just those who know them can just get off a shout out to all these folks. Uh, did I miss any anniversary people? All right. Let's have our ushers go ahead and come to the front here. Let's pray again. Let's pray blessings on our city for a little bit. And pray blessings on the congregation as well. Uh, we do that because we know you're not greedy, that you guys are want to receive and be blessed so that you can bless others. Amen. God wants you to be having an abundant life. He comes to give you life and life more abundant, that you might release that abundance, not just for yourself, but also those God puts you in contact with. Amen. So let's pray over this offering today. Father, we thank and praise you that you, O God, have been faithful to this local church. You've been faithful to the people of our congregation. May you bless, O oh God, what is sown this day to be used as a blessing to your kingdom. We pray, God, blessings on the city of Austin, all the surrounding towns and, and uh, cities around it as well, that you bring forth to them commerce, bring forth ideas and creativity, inventions, and bring forth, God, even more business in this city to bring forth more and more prosperity. Because as we prosper in the city, we also prosper, God, in the church. And if we prosper in the church, we, God, can be a conduit of more and more blessings for world missions, for ministries, for evangelism, O oh God, for all the needs of local churches. We thank you, Lord God, there shall be more than enough. Now, Father, also we say today that you rebuke the devourer for thy name's sake in our behalf. We command dead, O oh God, to be broken off your people and help, O oh God, all of us be wise stewards of all you've given to us. We give praise and thanks for all these things. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you, ushers, up and us out here. I know we had, um, this is one of those Sundays where I had, we had a plethora of folks telling us they're traveling out of town, and some folks have come back in from town. A few have, so this is a time when June's here, summer's here, and people are traveling more than ever. Most of the folks that go out of town like this watch us online, either live or tonight or sometime in the future, so I say hello to you. Traveling mercies, traveling protection, have a time of refreshing, and just be blessed in your travels as well. Um, I want a brand new series here as your bulletin cover shows. It's called Overcoming Roadblocks. I'm going to speak this morning here about the power of prayer because the best way to take and see roadblocks removed is by prayer. I'm not going to teach you about how to pray, but I'm going to give you some encouraging things about prayer we don't sometimes realize. One thing I've seen also the people of Austin, Texas are familiar with is a thing called roadblocks. We had the COVID virus a few years ago. I remember back in that era, back in that time, we first of all had to start wearing masks. That put a roadblock over our breath and over our face and made our lives more difficult. Many times I find myself going to, a, going to the HEB grocery store. I forgot my mask and I'd gone almost right into the front door. I'd go clear back to wherever the car was parked at and get my mask or I could not shop in that store. A lot of roadblocks from that took place. There's also a time where our church had to shrink down to 10 people when COVID first broke out. Churches could not have more than 10 folks in, in, in attendance at a time. So uh, we had then about 15 folks coming in. We began to social distance and spread out in the congregation. Then we had 20, 25, and 30. We became the fastest growing church in the city. We went from 10 to back to 100 and some in a matter of a month or two. So praise God, that was a blessed time of revival as far as numbers go in the church. Amen. Then we also saw the schools close and the kids had to stay home and do Zoom calls Roadblocks are up for them for all their uh, sports events and all their extracurricular activity and all their friendship face to face. Many roadblocks happen because of the COVID virus. Now, also because our city has grown so fast and so strongly, there's also natural roadblocks all around us, even to this day. 
They're widening I-35, they're widening 79, they're widening this road, widening that road, tearing up this place, putting up this building, this apartment complex goes up, there's roadblocks all over our city because uh, expansion is happening in this prosperous town that is growing so fast. So we are familiar with roadblocks in a natural realm around us, but got to realize there's also spiritual roadblocks. And God wants spiritual roadblocks to be removed. You know, one roadblock in our family, in our household, Cheryl mentioned our own daughter, Sarah, at age 15. That was back in 2007, had this uh, very, very rare disease where God did heal the organs that were shut down by constriction of blood to them. Her heart was almost gone. Her kidneys were almost gone. Liver was halfway dead. And God healed every organ in her body supernaturally by His Spirit because you folks were praying. We were praying. And because God is good, amen. And so before she left that hospital in 45 days of intensive care, even had a man named Dennis Quaid come and see her. She was so bad off. Um, This was a time where uh, God blessed and God did miracles for her. But to this day, from 2007 to now, we're still fighting this strong man of Takayasu vasculitis, which is arthritis of the blood vessels. She gets infusions once every six months to this day, six weeks to this day. And we're believing God that strong man is still going to come down. And she will not need infusions all of her life. Amen? They told her she'd have no baby. She's got three babies now. And uh, so God's still doing miracles for her, but there's still that one big miracle that has to happen. I believe God's releasing keys for folks in this congregation also who have got long-standing problems that God wants to break those long-standing things off of you. Amen? No man can do that, but God can do that. And there's some blockages, some roadblocks God wants to remove by His Spirit. So prayer also is something that most of us feel like doing, but we don't seem to do quite enough. I'm speaking to myself as well. Um, I, we had a great, great prayer apostle named Larry Lee. We were trained under back in the time of the 1980s. And this guy was doing prayer breakthroughs across America in large auditoriums. And he gave us a pattern there of prayer that he said, prayer always starts out first with discipline. You've got to find yourself, first of all, wanting to pray. Then you've got to find yourself becoming disciplined to pray. Because when you start praying in the mornings, you will tend to fall asleep. You will tend to find yourself getting weary. And that's why the man named Jerry Seville, the associate pastor at one time, or associate to Kenneth Copeland, he said, when I first began praying, I found myself falling asleep. So I began to take and perch myself on the side of the bathtub in the bathroom. And I started praying on the side, on the edge, balancing on the edge of the bathtub. So if I fell asleep, I'd fall forward in the toilet or I'd fall backwards in the bathtub. I quit falling asleep, he said, real fast. And he said, now I can pray in a recliner and not fall asleep. Amen. So it goes, first of all, from discipline, uh, from desire to discipline, from discipline, then it becomes a delight. Because in due time, you're going to find yourself wanting to go to the house of prayer. You're going to find yourself desiring to be there because when you go there, God's presence will be there stronger and stronger as you press in for prayer. Amen. We need to also make some things clear, first of all. The first thing is, does God have all power? How many folks believe he does? Most of you. Yes, God does have all power. That is a word omnipotent. God has all power. So if God is omniscient and God has all power, then why are we not not seeing certain things taking place? We're going to shake and we're going to talk about, we're going to try to answer three questions today to maybe write these things down as well as you can. This would be a good day to have somebody write some things down or take some notes or type on your iPads about as well. And the first question is going to be to us, do we pray long enough for some things? Number two is, how do we get the power released on the earth? Number three is going to be, when we pray, do we get answers? So I'm going to say those again in this order. How do we get the power of God released from heaven upon the earth? Do we pray long enough for some things? And when we pray, do we get answers to our prayers? You know, in my life here, I'm getting more and more answers to prayer as the time and decades go by, but I want to receive even more answers to prayer. I want to see God answering all the prayers, amen, not just some of them. So in Luke chapter 18, Jesus gives a story of a widow who bothers the unjust judge so much that he finally gives in to her and says, give her her request unless she wears me out. Now, Jesus gives this parable to us to show his disciples you should always pray and not give up. But the truth is, God is not the unjust judge. This is not talking about God here, because God is not an unjust judge. God is a just judge. 
So Jesus goes on in this parable and says, if God will take and, and if, if, if the manager there got help or broke through from a persistent widow, how much more will your father partake and answer your prayers in your behalf even quicker, saith the Lord. So God is saying, don't compare yourself and God to the unjust judge. Realize God lives in us. God is for us. God wants to answer prayers even more than we want them answered sometimes. But he's waiting for some things to sometimes break forth in our lives before prayers are answered. So we want God to release his power, but we need to also know that God has already deposited his power inside of us. You got to know that first of all. God has already put everything in you that you need to see prayer answered upon the earth. Didn't Jesus tell the disciples, if you have faith, you can speak to this mountain and it shall be removed. He didn't say to Peter by himself that. <clears throat> he didn't say that to, to Andrew. He said to all the disciples together, if all of you guys, any of you guys have faith, even as small as a mustard seed, you can speak to this mountain and it shall be removed. All of us have the Holy Spirit living in us. That means the power is already in us to accomplish great things with the power of the Holy Spirit. Can we say amen to that? Amen. Prayer is not trying to, <clears throat> excuse me, trying to get God <clears throat> to move it's releasing what God has already put inside of us. We're not trying to get God to move and make his hand come forth by our prayers. We're trying to release what God has already placed inside of us by the power of the Holy Spirit. So I've got three things to say today. I'm going to answer those three questions. Number one is this, <clears throat> excuse me, God has deposited his power inside of us. You're going to spend some time on that. God has put his power inside of us. I'm believing God today before we leave this place that God's going to give us a divine impartation of his spirit. That we're going to find ourselves going to a new level, even in prayer. When you ask somebody what Jesus' last words were to the disciples, most folks would answer Matthew chapter 28, which is called the Great Commission. The Great Commission starts out and says what? It says, go into all the world and preach the gospel. So the word go is there. But the fact is, that is not the last words Jesus Christ spoke to the disciples before he went to heaven. The last words that Jesus Christ spoke is actually found in Luke chapter 24 and verse 29. New Living Translation says this. It's spoken right before Jesus goes up into heaven and ascends before the disciples. After he's died on the cross and all these days have gone by, he now ascends. And it says in this verse, and now I will send the Holy Spirit just as my father promised, but stay, notice that, but stay here in the city until the Holy Spirit comes and fills you with power from heaven. Do you see that? So he's telling these guys, yes, do go, but don't go until you stay and get filled with the Holy Spirit who will give you the power. So when you go to where God calls you to go to, you can do something that God's called you to do. He's saying also there, if you're not filled with God's spirit and God's power, don't even go. I mean, why go to Africa? Why go to India? Why go to Chicago? Or why go to New York or whatever else there with no power of God on you? You can't do anything except let your flesh be glorified. We need the power of God to be in us wherever God sends us to go. So Jesus, first of all, says, stay until the Holy Spirit comes on you and my power is in you and then go to all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Baptized in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and so forth and so on. They're about making disciples, casting out demons, healing the sick, healing the blind, and making disciples of those people. Christ is saying there, don't go without the power of the Holy Spirit inside your life. The American church needs the power of God restored back to it once again. It should not make us go into, into total, um, I mean, it's almost just like uh, awe when somebody gets healed of blindness, that was a normal occurrence in the early church. It happened every day around them. They saw blind eyes opening. They saw demons being cast out. They saw the dead being raised. They saw uh, disease and leprosy being healed right before their eyes. It was a common occurrence on a day-by-day -day basis. It's become very, very uncommon around us. So folks now almost go into total spectacular mode or, uh, or celebration mode. I do celebrate myself when God does heal somebody. Praise God for that. But it should not be as rare as it is. It should become more commonplace once again. And not just that, but also words of knowledge and words of prophecy and gifts of faith and discerning of spirits. And these things should all become more and more commonplace because the Holy Spirit is already living inside of us. 
I want to celebrate all you folks that received that baptism of the Holy Spirit a few um, weeks ago when Keith Needham was here. I want to say I'm speaking to you guys also directly today that you now have a baptism inside of you. The Holy Spirit is going to give you new power, new faith, and God's going to speak to you new things. Amen. And I'm expecting God to do great things in and through you as well on the other side of being filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, Acts chapter 1, 8 says this, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. I want a fresh baptism myself of the Holy Spirit. When the Bible says be filled with the Holy Spirit, that word be is an ongoing verb. This actually means be being filled. It means don't just get filled one time and you're okay. It means keep on getting filled up. Keep on speaking in tongues. Keep on exercising faith. Keep on reading the Bible. Keep on worshiping God. Keep on recharging your batteries because you won't just get filled one time and that's enough because you're going to leak. Amen. You got to get yourself filled. Be being filled with the Holy Spirit. God puts the power in us by giving us the Holy Spirit. So how many here today, by a lifting of your hands here, can let me know how many have heard the verse before that says, Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we ask or think. How many have ever heard that verse before? Just raise your hand. Come, let's be very, very honest here. Put your hands down. How many have never heard that verse before? There's two over here and there's a couple over here that never heard that verse before. See, there's some folks that have, some haven't. But now, how many here, without speaking one word now, can tell me what the rest of that verse says? How many can just quote that out? The rest of that verse. Don't speak it out. Just raise your hand. So there's three or four of you. Know the rest of that verse. And Cheryl says she knows it, but I'm not going to test you. <laughs> now, you guys back in the back on that screen, if you can find Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Try to put that on the screen if you can. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20 is this verse, because most people don't know the rest of that verse. It says here what? Think according to the, according to the power that works in us. So God will do exceedingly abundantly above all you ask or think according to the power that works in you. You got to realize that the last part of that verse does not is, is uh, conditional to the first part of the verse. The first part won't take place unless the second part also is joined to it. According to the power that works in us. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. The Holy Spirit is the power that works in us. And the only reason we can do greater works than Jesus did, is what he said, is because the Holy Spirit now is on the earth and among us and in us. We can now do greater works than Jesus Christ himself did. Amen. As far as numbers are concerned, you know, Jesus never preached to a crowd of a million people. Vincent Idahosa did. Uh, Benny Hinn did. I think Joyce Meyer almost has. Billy Graham probably has. Reinhard Bonnke has. Angus Buckham has. Uh, Jesus Christ never could, did, waved his hands over a crowd one time and saw the whole crowd fall down under the power of the Holy Spirit. But we see folks that do that today that are evangelists and prophets and so forth. And, so, and also, Jesus Christ could not do mercy ships ministry. He didn't send boats all over the world like mercy ships ministry does. There's things happening all over the world today that Jesus Christ did not have time for and could not do. He was, had, he was on a mission by God, focused by God in Israel to make 12 disciples, fill them with the Holy Spirit there, be a trainer of people and men, and give us some Bible verses as well for the future. Then he went to heaven, praise God, and sent the Holy Spirit among us to fulfill the mission that Jesus Christ has. He was a seed that was sown. He died. He rose again. And now he says, now you're the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the seed of Abraham. Keep on doing what I've called you to do. You're now little Christ. You're Christians upon the earth. Amen. It's our job now to do what Jesus Christ could not finish totally upon the earth. The apostle Paul was prompted by the Holy Spirit in this verse to add three adverbs that seem to be unnecessary. You know, this verse could have said, God is able to do all that we ask or think. Wouldn't that be about enough? You know, what is all? All. God can do all we ask, above all we ask or think. But he added three adverbs to that. He said, no, God does not just do all you ask or think. God does exceedingly, abundantly, above all you ask or think. Hallelujah. That's right. There's just in revival in this place, uh, if you understood and realized that. What's that mean in a practical sense to you and I? In my life, what it means is I began to pray by God's prompting in 1979 at Christ for the Nations. He told me and spoke to me in that inner voice I talked about last week, the God's voice. He spoke to me and said, start praying for the country of South Africa. 
And so I began praying for that country every day. I had a keen interest in that country developed inside of me by praying for it. Little did I know that God would then lead me by divine coincidences to a young South African woman whose name was Cheryl Griffin, who was only 18 or 17 years of age, and she'd become my future wife on the last day of school. I also didn't know that God would move me to South Africa in 1985 for four years of vibrant ministry with Durban Christian Center, a, a mega church there, ministering to Zulus and Indian Asians and all the folks of the church and the nation around the Natal province. I didn't realize that God would give us a tent and God would give us a PA system and God would give us people around us to work with us. All the things that God did to bless us was exceedingly abundantly above all I asked, thought, or imagined. Amen. All I asked for was God save South Africa. God bless South Africa. God bring forth revival to South Africa. Lord, help the Zulus of South Africa. If God did that, that was all. That's all I asked for. God said, no, that's not enough. I'm going to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you ask or even think. I never thought that I'd be living there, married to a South African, ministering to Zulu people in person, and going to all these townships and so forth in rural areas there, I had, I had no dream or thought that would ever take place. But God does exceedingly abundantly above all you ask or think. So when you pray for your son to come back to Christ, you pray for your daughter to get saved, or whatever you're praying for, realize that prayer is important to get answered because God will do above all you ask or think by doing that miracle. Amen. And God will do an abundance that's exceedingly great and magnificent and mighty above all you can ask or imagine. The question is, if God can do exceedingly abundantly above all we ask or think, then why does he not do that for us so many times? That's the question. Why is that disease not being healed? Why is that wife or husband not coming? Why are my finances still faltering and I'm still in debt, almost at a point of bankruptcy? Why are these things not being answered. This question is the reason that so many believers have now become bitter and angry at God. They thought, they say, God, you're omnipotent. God, you're all powerful. God, nothing is too hard for you. I believe that, but why are my prayers not being answered? And that person still died. And the disease is still there. You know, my, in my own life, my own family, one of the sweetest, nicest, kindest, gentle woman, young ladies in our whole church at Faith Chapel in Wichita, Kansas, was about six, I knew her, known her since age 14 or 15 years of age. She was a model Christian in our youth group, in our church. Precious woman, a woman of God, young woman of God. My stepbrother got engaged to her. And uh, during the engagement time, she started going to Wichita State University. He ends up living on Wichita State University um, dormitories. And then on a Saturday night, she goes to do her laundry about 1030 at night to get her laundry done for the next morning's church services and so forth. In that laundry room was hidden a serial killer who had a knife who stabbed her over 55 times on her body, killed her, probably even did some things to her before he killed her, and uh, did not find her murderer who it even was until I think about 20 years later, he did another murder in Colorado and got caught there and confessed to the murder of Julie, my stepbrother's fiance. That was a tragic thing. And we say, how in the world could someone as precious and sweet as that ever fall Pray to a serial killer, to a pedophile, or whatever he was in, in all, of his, all of his evil. And um, their own mother, the mother of Julia, unfortunately, took that to heart and said in her own heart, uh, I'll, I'm speaking for her, God did not answer, or God was not there. God could have been there. God's omnipotent. I and thus now reject God, don't like God, and I'm going to go back to my old natural, fleshly, sinful ways. And she just totally backslid, went out of church, out, out of uh, God's kingdom, whatever, totally. And I, I, I think she's even uh, gone as far as her body's gone, that she's dead by now. And so I'm saying many Christians have gone a route like that, become bitter and angry at God because God could have, but God didn't. Now, you see, in something of that situation there with my own stepbrother's fiance that died and got murdered, I use that as a catalyst. I need to pray for my grandchildren and my children every day. We live in an evil world with an evil devil who wants to kill and wants to steal and wants to destroy. I take responsibility for my children, my wife, my household, myself, this church, and our grandkids as well. I cover them in prayer every single day, knowing there's a lion out there trying to find someone prowling around to kill, steal, and destroy from, and it will not be my grandkids. 
And it will not be my children, and it will not be my wife, my life, or us in Jesus' name. Amen? And I know that God has saved us time and again from major car crashes, major calamities, wrong this, wrong that could have taken place and happened, but God saved us and saved them again and again. I'm not trying to blame Julie's mother. Her father was gone. He was, he was dead. But I'm simply saying to you that we need to be praying. There's power in prayer. The word according here, it says here in Ephesians 3.20, according to the power that works in you, in us. It actually means in the Greek language, in the measure of, and it donate, uh, denotes distribution. In the measure of, and it denotes distribution. So what according actually means here is, God is able to do a seemingly, seemingly abundantly all, all we ask or think or imagine as we distribute His power among us. If you distribute the power of God in you, you're fulfilling the accordance here of Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20. This means that by his own choice, God has limited himself to having power on the earth as he partners with the body of Jesus Christ. Even though God's got all power over all the universe, he has chosen to say, I am now partnering with mankind and my church and my believers, my sons and my daughters, and if they won't do it, it won't be done. I limit myself to their prayers. What they bind on earth is bound in heaven. What they loose on earth is loosed in heaven. If they don't do it, it won't be done. So don't blame God for stabbed victims and no, no disease being broken and accidents happening there. God's already paid the price. The power is already in us. God's already sent Jesus Christ to die on the cross. It's time for us to just go forth and distribute now the power of God through us, through prayer. So let's go to Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 30. Ezekiel twenty-two thirty 30 says this. So I sought for a man or a woman among them who would make up a wall, notice that, and stand in the gap before me on behalf of the land that I should not destroy it, but I found no one. Now you see, sometimes what we really, we really want sometimes is God to be a magician who simply waves his magic wand over us. And if you're a believer and a Christian, all things are protected, provided for, and cared for because God's a magician with a magic wand. And God will watch over us. And because Jesus Christ intercedes for us, we don't need to pray ourselves. Let, let Jesus pray. If you live like that, you are living very dangerously and very foolishly because you need to be a person praying to God yourself. You see, Jesus Christ is the connection between us and God, the Father. That's why we pray in the name of Jesus to the Father. Amen. He intercedes for us. He's the connector for us. So understand that as well. Notice in this verse here, Ezekiel 22, verse 30. It, it does not say that they would make it taken. They would, they would stand. They would have a man who would among them who would make or a wand and wave that and God would build the wall for them. It says the man had to get up and build the wall himself. And then when he found a gap in the wall, had to stand in that gap. I believe God puts a wall around every one of our kids, our grandkids, and so forth. But sometimes a gap appears. Sometimes they backslide, they sin, they do things of disobedience or whatever else is there. And a gap appears. There's gaps right now, I believe, in Austin, Texas that have appeared. God's looking for people who will stand in those gaps and intercede for this city and this nation, this election. Our children, our grandkids, ourselves, stand in the gap, make up the gap there, and know that God then will see the gap is closed, Satan sees the gap is closed, and the devil cannot get in. He finds no place in us. Amen. Number two is this. We must also release his power through prayer. Release his power through prayer. In John chapter 7, Jesus goes to Judea for a thing called the Feast of Tabernacles. And uh, in this feast... It lasted for seven days. They would take and they would pray, and they would pray for living water. They actually were prophetically praying for Jesus Christ, the Messiah, because He is the living water. Amen? He is the water. He said, he said to Himself, I am the water. Remember the lady at the well that was there? He said, I am the one who is the living water you seek after. And so with golden pitchers, they would go to the pool of Siloam, that's close to the temple in Jerusalem. They'd fill their little um, pitchers up, and they'd pour their pitchers out on the altar Believing God for living waters, and then in the afternoon they go out and get drunk and party and do immoral things sometimes as well. 
And they see the years have gone by, and uh, we find the same thing happening here in our own country and around the world as, too, as well, because now we have a thing called Lent, a thing called Mardi Gras, and a thing called Fat Tuesday. You see, Fat Tuesday happens right before the Wednesday of Ash Wednesday, and Ash Wednesday where you put the cross on your head with ashes, and you make a vow to fast, fast for something. But before that, on Tuesday night, you get drunk, you party, and do something immoral. A lot of the folks do in parts of our nation around the world. And so God is saying it came from that practice years and years ago, even way back in the times of this tabernacle uh, time as well. So today now, God is telling us, um, we're in a time of tabernacles, I believe, as well, where God's calling us now to seek after a thing called living waters. And the truth is, living waters has already been released to us by the power of the Holy Spirit. Streams of living waters are already accessible and working in us, according to the Spirit of God in us as well. For seven days they prayed for living water. On the eighth day, if living water did not come to them, they then began to take and just pray for rain. Let's just, just let it rain, God. At least let it rain. Living waters won't come. Let it rain. And so, on the eighth day again, on the Feast of, of this uh, Tabernacles, Jesus Christ makes an announcement in John chapter 7, verse 37 through 38, let's read 39, let's read this. Jesus Christ's announcement on the eighth day. On the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood up and he cried out and he said, If anybody thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He says, Those who believe in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart or belly will flow rivers of living water. Do you realize there's nowhere in the Bible that it says those who believe in Jesus Christ out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water? But it says as the scripture has said. We see we misinterpret that sometimes. We think, we think there's a scripture in the Bible that it refers to or there's not. What Christ is saying here is this. Those who believe in me as the scripture has said. Those who believe in me as the scripture has said. Out of him or her shall flow rivers of living water. You see that? You got to believe in the Jesus the scriptures talk about. Amen. Then it goes on and says this, but this he spoke concerning the spirit whom those believing in him would receive for the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus Christ was not yet glorified. Well, praise God. Jesus Christ has been glorified. He has come. He has died. He has risen from the dead. The Holy Spirit's here among us. And now streams of living water can now flow through us in Jesus name. Do we have a rushing water river flowing out of our hearts, or has it gone down to a trickle? One reason I'm going to fast right now for probably the next 20 days, I've already been on this thing for seven days, is because I want to hear God better. I want God's river to flow more of a gushing river in my heart than it's ever been before. I want God to clean out the pipes. I want to be able to see God even more clearly and see what God's doing around me more clearly. I want more revelation, more power, more anointing, more uh, ability to bear lasting fruit. I want more power over my flesh. I want more of the Spirit of God in my life. So I'm going to keep right on trudging on here as well. You know, when I, when I go on fast like this, when God calls me to a fast, I don't get hungry. And it's been like that the whole week. And so I don't find myself just um, going crazy. Now, I tell, I tell Cheryl sometimes and joking, I'll say, boy, look at that burrito on, on that Taco Bell commercial. That looks pretty good right now. But I don't go to Taco Bell and buy one. And my belly still calms down. And God gives me grace for that. But I still encourage you guys, in the month of June, God's told me it's going to be a month of spiritual warfare. But at the same time, it's also going to be a month of spiritual victory. That through the warfare, the church is going to rise up to new levels, new anointings, new powers, and bring forth more victories than they've seen for, I believe, years has gone by. So in my prayer life, I need to pray more specifically and more detailed over my children, my grandchildren, this church, this nation than I ever have before. You see, I'm more of a bottom line type praying person. I'll pray, Father God, just bless my children, my grandchildren here. Watch over them as they drive their cars, they travel, live, and move, and have their being, so forth and so on. It's kind of a bottom line prayer. And the Holy Spirit is telling me now, slow down. You're not praying specific enough. You're not praying detailed enough. Start slowing down and speaking specific blessings over your wife, your children, your grandchildren, church members, those that are bound by sickness and disease. Slow down and start being more detailed and start tearing and taking more time as you wait upon me. It's one thing God's revealing in my heart about prayer 
is don't be so quick and so fast to get in, to get out. But be sometimes slow down and be more specific and be more detailed and wait on the Lord. He's got answers for us. We are to speak with our mouth. The Bible says our mouth is what releases the power of God. The power of life and death is in your tongue. I can speak death to addictions and death to those involved in crime as far as their crimes are concerned. I can speak death to poverty. We can speak death to many things. Amen. And God hears that and God will answer that. But I can also I can speak life to churches. I can speak life to my children, life to my grandkids, life to my wife, life to myself. Are we doing that? I encourage you guys, don't neglect the place of prayer. We're in a time right now of warfare, a time, a season where God wants to break forth in our lives. Has God already sent the Holy Spirit? Do you believe he has? I think the answer is yes. We just have to take and receive it. It's already inside of our hearts, already flowing in us and flowing through us. Why did Elijah pray seven times for rain? Even after God told him rain will come. He still prayed seven times, though God told him before he prayed, rain will come. Because he understood the principle of perseverance, repetition, not giving up. When he saw the cloud the size of a man's hand, then he quit praying. Rain is coming. God has answered my prayer. The problem is we don't wait for that cloud the size of a man's hand sometimes. If God doesn't answer fast, we give up. We quit. And God says, don't quit. Don't give up. It is time to persevere in Jesus' name. It says because Jesus Christ prayed three times in the Garden of Gethsemane. He prayed three times. It says, then angels manifested the third time and ministered to him. Praise God. Sometimes it takes perseverance. It takes going on and praying on with God's help. The Holy Spirit showed me this one thing about last week's message that I didn't even know back then. I saw it for the first time. I told you when the 40-day fast of Jesus happened, first thing Christ said was as he heard that John the Baptist was locked up in prison. And I said, that shows you again that God opens your ears up to hear things you need to hear when you fast and pray. But also God told me this. He said, also, Jesus knew John the Baptist was going to get killed and martyred. He knew all things. And the fact is, the Bible says that Paul and Silas and Peter all got miraculously released from prison by God's angels. Doesn't it say that? What's that show us? God can deliver anybody he wants to out of prison. He can blind eyes, open up prison doors, break the chains. God can do it for anybody, even John the Baptist. But it says whenever he, the fast was finished, and Jesus heard that John the Baptist was in prison. He could right there stopped and prayed, first of all, Lord, I right now say, be released. Be loosed. You will not kill him in my name. But guess what Jesus, I think, did do? He said, Father God, give John the Baptist grace to die. It is your will he, be, he becomes a martyr. It is your will he goes away at this time in the flesh to rise up in, in a resurrection of his, of his spirit. It's not your will he lives through this. It's your will he dies in this. To be an example, but also to be a powerful witness of who you are. And so John, what Christ was praying there was, I pray to you, O God, the Father, give John the Baptist grace for his death. Give him peace. Give him comfort. Give him supernatural ability to have a smile on his face when they cut his head off. Do you, do you believe that? That's the prayer I believe Jesus prayed for John the Baptist at that time. The Bible says in the last of the last days, many believers are going to have their heads cut off for Jesus. Now, I'm not saying you need that kind of faith today for that. But when that day does come, may faith be there for you. Amen. Did you get your head cut off laughing all the way as it rolls down the hill and your body's back here? <laughs> I'm going to heaven. My spirit man is delivered. I'm going to see Jesus face to face. Goodbye, body. I am dead and I praise God. I'm going to a better place. You, only, you can only do that through Jesus Christ and being a believer. Amen. There will be dying grace when you need it. God promises that. So moving on here. Why did Daniel pray for 21 days? Daniel chapter 10 says he prayed for the, his nation, the place he was at there. He began to fast for three weeks, 21 days, having no choice foods, meats, and so forth. It says, and then an angel comes to him and tells him, on the first day you prayed, your prayer was heard. 
But the prince of the, per of the Persian kingdom, demon spirit strong man, resisted your angel. And so on the 21st day, finally God let the angel Michael, the archangel, be released. Because he was no match against Michael, the archangel. Prince of Persia was no match. And so it says, through that, the answer came. The breakthrough took place. And what God told me that even this morning in prayer was this. You know, God's word says what? The kingdom of God suffers violence. That means there's angels fighting in the heavenlies around us all the time. They are wrestling. They are fighting around us all the time. Good against evil. And sometimes there's a bigger angel needed than you've got on your side right now. And sometimes only through fasting and prayer does that a stronger angel come to your aid and knock that demon spirit out. That's why many long-standing things are not being answered yet. Because we're, we're warring against them with uh, angels that are not quite strong enough yet to do that. And so I believe God wants to start dispatching stronger and stronger warring angels to us to bring down some strong men in Austin, Texas, and over our school system, over our politics, over our government, over ourselves and our families. And I believe God's going to do that. But it's going to take place through prayer. How many folks realize your car is great as you drive around? Your SUV is great. When your house is on fire and there comes an emergency, you need a fire truck. The fire truck is greater than your car. It costs a whole lot more it's a whole lot bigger and it puts down a whole lot more flames. Amen. But sometimes you got to send for a fire truck. God's got angelic fire trucks up there waiting to be dispatched to quench the fires of Satan upon this earth. If we'll just call upon the name of Jesus and say, God, flow through us by your spirit. This illustrates to us perseverance is not relying totally upon short, hard prayers. We love those short, hard prayers. Sometimes it takes time and perseverance and repetition and that prayers get answered. Last of all, number three, very quickly here. Let's turn to Revelations chapter um, eight in your Bibles. I'm going to read Revelations chapter five in a moment. Number three is God adds his power to our prayers. God adds his power to our prayers. Revelations five, eight says, now when the, when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders, they fell down. Before the, before the Lamb, each having a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. So it says these, these bowls were filled with the prayers of the saints. That means your prayers go to heaven, and they're being stored there in a bowl, a, a place there where God can use that for His glory. Let's get more clarity on this. Let's read now Revelations chapter 8. Make sure I can see what I'm reading as well in this. Romans, Revelations 8, starting in verse 1. Read what it says. When he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour. Now, one dad, dumb dad joke years ago said, that's why you can see right here, there'll be no lady women in heaven. There was silence in heaven for half an hour. Isn't that a dumb dad joke? I would never use that. Number two, verse two. And I saw seven angels who stand before God and to them were given seven trumpets. Another angel, having a golden censer, came and stood at the altar. He was given much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints ascended before God from the angel's hand. Then the angel took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar, threw it down to the earth. There were noises, thunderings, lightnings, and there were earthquakes. And what this shows us here is, your prayers that go to heaven make a difference on the earth. God takes those, those prayers, puts them into bowls. When those bowls are filled up, he tips the bowl out. Angels come. The fire of God is mixed with that, those prayers, and something happens on the earth because of prayer. I want to say again that revival will only come to this country by prayer. Not by worship, worship teams, good preaching, anointed people, it's going to take the price of prayer. And I hear time and time again, prophetic folks are saying we are in the balances right now in our country. And if we won't pray, we don't know what's going to take place in our country in some real negative ways in the days ahead. It's time for the church to pray and come together here and believe God to bring forth supernatural breakthroughs in this country. 
Because our youth need to get saved. Our youth are an almost unreached people group right now. They need Jesus as Lord and Savior. UT campus needs to get saved. We need revival upon this campus of the Longhorns. Amen? And I'm praying on a more regular basis now for Longhorns, for the, for the campus there. They come to know Christ as Savior. Groups would rise up and so forth. And we're not just going to see activists that are there. They're going to be doing the Satan's agenda. We're going to start seeing God's agenda carried out more and more and more on these campuses. Like UT. Like ACC. Like Texas State. Yes. And so on. Amen? Amen? When the bowls were full, the angel adds the fire to it. Throws it down to the earth. And all of us that are here today have got angels most of your angels, though, can be doing a whole lot more than they're doing. Most of our angels, my angel included, can be doing a whole lot more than they're doing. And God says it's time to start believing God for bigger and better and greater things and see roadblocks being removed by the power of God's Spirit. It may take some fasting. It does take prayer. But God adds fire to your prayers as only He can do. You know what prayer is like? Prayer is like a faucet. When you turn your showers on at least at my house in the mornings only cold water comes out what i got to do is go next to my my shower to the bathtub and turn the bathtub hot water on also then the hot water comes faster to the shower and finally after, after about two minutes goes by finally the hot water finally comes that's how prayer is prayer is going to start out cold but if you keep, keep on praying keep on believing keep on shouting out to god He's going to turn the cold water into hot. Amen. Your prayers will become hot in Jesus' name. Amen. And God will turn that coldness into heat and warmth. He's going to bring forth something good on the earth. And the shower shall be very satisfying. That God brings forth showers of blessings. Will be on How many folks hate cold showers? I've had many cold showers in foreign countries by force. I don't like cold showers. I like hot showers. And God says, showers of blessings will come on your life through prayer. If I can have Greg come back to the platform, please. We're going to close in prayer in a little bit. The Bible says the fire of God was found by Elijah to lick up the water in the trench, to kill the prophets of Baal, or folks that came to kill him, soldiers. The fire was found in Moses' dry bush experience. The fire was found in Pentecost when tongues of fire lit upon them. As they begin to speak in new tongues, new languages. Fire represents the, the power of God. And what God told me to do today, this morning's service, was close out by doing this. We're going to pray the fire of God gets released on this congregation and upon this place. And the Holy Spirit told me to, ha to have Angela come to the front, my wife come to the front. I need Jack to come to the front. Would you guys do that? Just come to the front here. Have you, have you join me on the platform as well? I want Audra to stand with us. Audra can come also and stand with us here on the platform. These aren't the only folks in our church that have got the fire of God flowing through them. But these guys are faithful prayer warriors, like other folks here are as well. But I don't need, I don't need everybody, every, every one of the people I know that's intercessor prayers in this church, prayer warriors. But I just need all of us that are here, these five of us, five of us to come together. Because five is a number of grace. Amen. We're going to take and we're going to pray and release here by faith upon this congregation, the fire of God is released. Let's all stand to our feet. If you have the, uh, the freedom to do this or if you um, are not uncomfortable doing this, lift your hands to God even now. Let's invite the Holy Spirit to be here in the way He wants to be here and the way He wants to move among us. And Father, I praise and thank you, O oh God, this day that you are no respecter of persons. Amen. Help us, God, to be those who don't look upon a Saul and try to find a Saul to meet our needs and be the answer for our country. Saul is dead. Now we have God, the spirit of David, spirit of worship, spirit of praise, spirit of intercession. And Father, we praise you, God, this day that you're here upon this church called the Tree of Life Church. Not to play religion, not to play church games, but, oh God, to use us as vessels of honor. Lord, your word says for this purpose is the Son of God manifest to destroy the works of the devil. We can do more. I can do more. We can do more. Father, I pray first of all, forgive us for letting our angels be unemployed. Forgive us, O oh God, for letting our angels get lazy and need treadmills. O oh God, we say energize our angels, activate our angels. 
as you activate God, our spirit. And now us five together, let's pray together here, oh God, we just say the fire of God be released, oh Lord, upon this congregation. In the name of Jesus, we praise you, God, for fresh fire. Fresh fire, fresh anointing, God, upon this people. Just reach out right now, receive that right now. In Jesus' name, my Lord, I receive the fire of God. I receive a fresh anointing of God. I receive the power of God increasing in my life. In the name of Jesus. Father, I give you praise and thanks, O oh Lord, that you're ministering life. And God, you're working through us, O oh God, identifying strong men around us. And Lord God, please have mercy upon our city, upon our nation. Release, God, the angels we need, the powerful archangels, O oh God, to bring down these works of hell that are got roots down so deeply. Those roots, O oh God, will take and be cut off, even like the roots, O oh God, of Nebuchadnezzar, who would not honor God, but begin to honor himself above God. And the dream you gave him was, I'm going to cut you off like a stump. And I praise God, praise God this day that you're going to cut down the works of Satan like a mighty oak. Bring it down, Father, in Jesus' name. And Father God, bring forth a fresh anointing upon us. Bring forth, oh God, fresh anointing upon us. Fresh fire, God, be released. Let us, oh God, be baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit. Help us, God, to find time to pray, to have a desire to pray. Convict us to pray. Help us rearrange our schedule to pray. Help us put down our iPhones to pray. Help us, God, to make arrangements to pray. Help us, God, make accommodations, God, to pray, to distribute, to distribute the power of God, the faith of God in us. It's already in us. Father, forgive us for not distributing what you've given us. Praise you, God. Thank you, Jesus. There's somebody in here of the five want to lead us out in some kind of a prayer also. Just feel free to go. Just lead us out if you want to. She'll get the microphone here as well. It is very important that you use your prayer language. It's very important that you use your prayer language. You must use your prayer language. It's your communication with the Most High, with Father, by His Spirit. We are the household of faith. We live by faith. The just shall live by faith. That's how we please Him is by faith. He said he'll have a house of prayer. He said he will have it. We are the body. He is the head. Pray. He'll give you the words. Just show up. Just make the time. You, you make the time. No one else can do it but you. Make the time and just be there. And then he'll meet you there he'll give you the words he'll give you the words and you'll agree and then watch and see what our great God will do The Bible says, um, I think it's in Acts chapter 2, that you will be filled with the Holy Spirit and with fire. You see, I got baptized in the Holy Spirit on a Sunday night when I was 20 years old. And then about a month later in my bedroom, 
in times of worship and praise and God was sort of doing work in my life, the fire of God hit my bedroom, hit me. I fell to my knees and just began like melted butter. It was like liquid love just came inside of my, my whole being. And I began to beam like the sun, so much so all my coworkers, the job I've been, been at for two years said, what in the world is different about you? And they began to come to me one at a time behind the scenes. What do you have? What do I need? I started leading folks to Jesus. For the first time in two years of my job, they were coming to me under conviction. I look at unsaved women at the, at the Dillon's grocery store there. I saw conviction come on their eyes, upon their face. Just by, just by having, just by locking eyes somehow. People as well. I could look at one person in one second and see if they were dead in their eyes to God or alive to God. God just began doing supernatural things through that. We need the fire of God inside of our lives. And I pray today if you might have felt anything, because you're turning the tap on. Maybe only cold water is coming out right now. But I'm saying beyond this service, do some homework. Spend some time alone with God and say, God, I just receive all you have for me. Because I want to be more effective in this earth than I have been in Jesus' name. Praise God. Anything else you've got yourself, Cheryl? And I just uh, feel like we need to realize that prayer is like a seed. And when we, we plant a seed, we don't see it growing. But as its roots going down, they're going down deep. And then as it sprouts, you see what it's producing. And sometimes we just have to um, let God do the work on our behalf, even though we don't see it immediately. God is faithful. But when Pastor was preaching this morning, something that really stood out to me is I don't believe that many of us, and me included, realize the power of God that is actually in us. We are talking about the Holy Spirit, the living God that is dunamis power that is inside of us. And so we don't just uh, serve God and pray just because we're supposed to, or we're supposed to repeat things or whatever. It has So many of us have been trained, but we actually have a living God living inside of us. That is amazing. That is amazing. And he has deposited that dunamis power, that, dy that power that is like dynamite in our lives. And sometimes we don't always walk in that because we think it's like just part of our lives, but it is our lives. Amen. It's our lifeline. And that is what we're going to be forever and ever. And that's where God likes to communicate is when we know our authority in him. We have authority in that with within our hearts and with our, in our lives. So don't feel like, well, I hard, you know, this, I'm, I'm not good enough. I don't know how to pray. You do because you have that inside of you. It was your first point is that we have the power of God inside of us. We have it. And now we just need to walk in it and walk it out. Amen. Good. All right. I'm going to let Greg just one more worship song our prayer partners that are here can still be if you don't mind coming to the front and if you want someone to pray for you about anything in life whether it be uh, relational physical financial please take time to even find a prayer partner here to pray a prayer of agreement we appreciate our prayer warriors so much if you guys can do come back this coming wednesday night this is a very very anointed series it's called the chosen and cheryl's already seen the first two and said they're the most powerful ones she's seen yet and so you'll enjoy that. We'll get, we'll get done by about, what, 8 o'clock most Wednesday nights. And uh, we'll bring in some good Round Rock donuts. We'll bring in some good pizza. I will. And uh, I won't eat them, but I'll have to bring them in here. And uh, we'll have some other, other things fixed besides that. So it'll be quarter to sit to 7, 6.45. We'll be able to eat and then come together here and watch this film together. Okay, so God bless you folks. Let's let uh, Greg lead, uh, dismiss us and also lead us in a song here. It's my shepherd, and he goes before me, defender behind me, I won't fear, I'm filled with
just thank you that you are our shepherd and you guide us and you lead us you walk with us you never leave us alone you are a constant source and we just bless you we give you all the glory we give you all the praise and we just thank you Lord we thank you as we go from this place that you go with us and you you walk with us in Jesus name Amen.